Hey everyone, look what just came in today. This is the Boba Fett Tython Jedi Ruins Black Series figure. This came from Star Action Figures over in the UK. It took 11 days from when I ordered it to when it arrived, so that's not too bad, and it cost me, I think it was $42, including shipping, because I ordered a couple other things with it. You can see we have the Dark Trooper up here flying through the air along with some rocks, and we've got the same artwork on the back, typical for the Black Series. And this is a really great likeness to Tamara Morrison on the back here. I think it looks definitely better than the figure does. This is number 22 in the Mandalorian line, which is kind of crazy because that Tython Boba that we got just a few months ago, this is actually just number 16. So there have been six figures since then, and there are even more out already, like number 23, which we'll look at later. But let us go ahead and open the box here. I always open them from the bottom. I think it just keeps the shape of the box a little bit nicer. Let's get him out of the packaging here. Probably one of our last figures with plastic packaging, so enjoy the crinkling while you can. And let's look at his jetpack. This is very similar to the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett figure. This should be the exact same sculpt as that one, but the paint job I think has a little bit more metallic weathering on it, but overall it is very similar to what we have seen before. And if we compare it to the Book of Boba Fett throne room figure, we can see that it is the same sculpt, just this one has a solid green paint job. I did do some custom weathering on that, and unfortunately I don't have a brand new version of it to compare directly, but you get the idea. And this comes off here so you can use the flame effects from the Return of the Jedi Boba Fett in case you want to use them on this newer figure. And both his rifle and his pistol are the same exact sculpts and paint jobs that we saw in the Throne Room Boba Fett figure. So no surprises there because he only repaints his armor in the show and he doesn't repaint his weapons. The helmet seems to fit really nicely on the head, which we will get to later. It does have the articulated rangefinder here, but we have that really damaged metallic look like we saw in the Return of the Jedi figure. This one just has it cranked up a little bit. I did struggle to pose this figure for several minutes and just try to get him to stand up straight. His waist just feels like it's always a little bit twisted, and I was just trying to line up the seams on the pants here to get into his just like default stance, but he wouldn't stand up even without his jetpack. And so by lining up the pants here, we just know that we're like having him in the position that he was sculpted in, but we are going to have to articulate that a little bit. But I was just having trouble getting him to stand up straight. I know you guys have probably seen this in some of your figures before where it feels like one leg is just shorter than the other and it's just difficult to get into position. But once I did get him into an action pose, he did look great, but this was a bit of a struggle here. And then getting his rifle into his hand uh, was a little tricky. This is the same as the other Boba Fett figures, but I was able to kind of stretch the fingers and then get the thumb through the loop there. And then all of the other fingers fell into place where they belong. It did just take me a bit of time. I was thinking that it was like the Death Watch figure where he kind of has to grab it from up and over, but uh, the thumb was able to fit through the, um, the loop there. I'm sure that's the proper gun term. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this is how I was able to get him set after some time. It's kind of hard to do a review of a sculpt that we have seen before since you guys kind of already know what to expect here. If you are interested in the articulation of this figure, you can look up any number of the Throne Room Boba reviews that are on YouTube and get a full uh, review there if you don't already own the figure. So we'll just, uh, you know, compare this uh, in terms of paint job and that sort of thing to the other figures. And I know I'm not the most in-depth reviewer when it comes to articulation and that sort of kind of more engineering aspect of things, but you guys know where to find that if you, that's what you're interested in, so I'll do my thing, and if you like it, I'll see you at the next video as well. But let's compare him now to the Book of Boba Fett throne room figure. As I mentioned before, I did do some custom weathering and metallic work on this figure, so it's not going to be a very good comparison in case you're looking to buy one or the other, but hopefully this can give you an idea of you know, how similar the sculpts are as well as just the general vibe of the figure to see which one you prefer. I did feel like the helmet on the one on the left fit a little bit better and just kind of covered his chin a little bit more than the uh, one on the right, but I might be wrong, and something about the helmet on the left feels slightly different, but I would be shocked if they gave a different sculpt on that one. Even though his helmet in the Book of Boba Fett is a little bit different, but I would be really surprised if we got a different sculpt here. The only difference that I see is the belt. And I'm sure as soon as I post this video, someone else will point that something else is totally different that I completely missed, but... Also, his pants and the undersuit are obviously a lighter brown instead of the black, even though I believe they were black in the show. 
but this actually is a great exclusive figure because it is just generally a repaint. Let's look at the faces, as you can see, exact same sculpt, identical paint job, I can't really see any differences here, which would make sense because nothing on his face really changed in the show during this time period when he switches outfits, or I should say repaints it. And then the face sculpt on the Tython Boba figure is also exactly the same. The only thing is the one on the right has a worse uh, face print. You can see the eyes are a little bit misaligned and how big of a difference that makes on a figure. So always check your figures before you buy them while we still have plastic windows in order to do so. I ordered this one online and you can see it's a little wonky. And speaking of face sculpts, I am very happy to be able to finally do this. I ordered this head sculpt from Fett Clone on Instagram probably over a year ago, and it has been sitting on my custom Boba Fett in his beige outfit from when he escapes from the Sarlacc and is imprisoned by the Tusken Raiders. I have to be careful not to leave Boba in this hot water too long or else he's going to start having some flashbacks. But if you want to learn how to do these uh, hot water head swaps, I have another video on my channel where I show how to do that quite easily. Basically, you just heat up some water, <laughs> let your figure sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, and it makes the plastic really pliable and the pieces just pop out so you can see how easily. And then they go right back on while they are still warm. And now we can finally bring in this custom sculpt. And it is immediately clear at how important a good head sculpt and face paint is on a figure. This really just brings the figure to life so much and Fett Clone just does an incredible job every single time. I have about nine heads coming from him and I'll definitely do an unboxing video when I get those. It has actually helped me get out of collecting hot toys because he can make Black Series figures look just as good. I mean, look at the difference here between the Hasbro sculpt and paint job versus Fett clones, and obviously there is a bit of a price difference, but it's totally worth it to me, especially now getting out of Hot Toys and just really making my Black Series collection just shine as much as it can on its own. And then let's look at him with the other figures from this episode, like the Mortar Stormtrooper and Fennec Shand, of course. This is definitely how I plan to display him on the shelf. And I can't wait to add the Dark Trooper or a couple Dark Troopers and Grogu and Mando to that shelf. I'll do a whole Mandalorian shelf series eventually as well. Speaking of the other figures from the Mandalorian, let's look at how this figure looks in the mural lineup. So we've got 19, Ahsoka, number 20 is the client. Then we have Death Watch Mando coming in at 21, which brings us right into number 22, which is the new Tython Boba. And then number 23 I actually have in hand already, it is the New Republic security droid. And I think that's as far as we know in the Mando series. Let me know if we have number 24 revealed at all. I might just be totally blanking on that. I think it's going to be Axe Woves. But anyway, there you have it. That is my Boba Fett Tython Jedi Ruins review. And here is your Mandalorian lineup. Please like and subscribe if you liked the video. And I'll see you all next time.